Hey everyone, I'm Stephanie and I'll be talking about the need for distributed memory in RPC. So first, let's take a look at RPC. We'll look at why it's so successful today and what's still missing. RPC has of course been hugely successful. Many of today's distributed applications are built on RPC, including everything from specialized frameworks like distributed TensorFlow to microservices applications that capture custom business logic. So what exactly are the reasons for its success? Well, first there's the simple but powerful semantics. Request response is a very flexible and low level abstraction that's useful for almost any distributed application. The semantics are also simple in that all values in the request and response are copied meaning that there's no shared state between the client and server. And that's part of the reason why we have such efficient RPC implementations today, like gRPC and Apache Thrift. No shared state means no distributed coordination, and so it's a lot simpler to build scalable and low latency systems for RPC. Finally, RPC encourages interoperability. As long as an application understands RPC, another RPC application can communicate with it. And that's part of the reason why RPC is so popular for building microservices. It provides a common standard for microservice APIs. But as you probably guessed from the title of this talk, RPC has its limitations too. The one we'll be focusing on here is the fact that all data is passed by value, which can get expensive when data is large. Let's use this simple program as an example. The client running this program will first call f on worker one and then call f on worker two. In both cases, the return values A and B get sent back to the driver, and the driver then has to copy these values back to worker two when calling add. Now this example is intentionally naive, but the point here is that when RPC is used for large values, the application might have to deal with expensive data movement. Now the obvious solution is to pass the values by reference instead. This time when worker one executes F, it stores A in its local memory instead of returning it to the driver. And the same thing happens for the second call to F. And now when invoking add, the driver can send references to A and B instead of the values. Worker two then only has to fetch A and we can avoid the unnecessary copies back to the driver. Of course, passing values by reference is not a new idea. And in fact, applications already do this on their own. But implementing references at the application level can be pretty challenging. To see this, let's compare the architecture to a pass by value RPC system. Here is a cluster of servers, and one of them hosts the client. To make a request, the client first sends a request to a load balancer that chooses a server to execute the request. And the client also sends along the data. Passing by value makes memory management simple because values can be collected as soon as the server completes the request. But data movement here can be expensive. So one solution is to add references to this design by deploying a distributed key value store alongside the RPC application. Now the client passes only the key and the server can fetch the data from the key value store. So we no longer have to send all arguments from the client. However, this design also forces the application to implement manual memory management. Using keys as references is like using raw pointers in a traditional program. And like raw pointers, it's up to the developer to make sure that they get cleaned up properly. Since manual memory management requires significant developer effort, usually this task gets handled by a specialized framework like Apache Spark for data processing. The client no longer invokes RPCs directly on the servers. Instead, the framework implements a domain specific and higher level interface such as RDDs for Spark. The framework manages all execution and data movement within the cluster, so it can provide efficient and automatic memory management for end user applications. However, frameworks are also generally limited to a specific domain and interoperability between frameworks is harder than with pure RPC because of the use of higher level APIs. And this will only get worse as frameworks diversify and the number of higher level APIs increase. Let's take a closer look at why interoperability matters. For RPC, stitching together two applications is as simple as importing an interface. But data intensive applications don't have a common foundation like RPC. So data exchange is a problem that has to be addressed for every pair of applications. What ends up happening today is that developers have to deal with redundant copies of the data and a lot of wrangling between different higher level formats. For example, let's take a look at a single application today. Some parts might communicate with pass by value RPC maybe a microservices application that collects events from customers. 
With the rise of big data and machine learning, this is now just one piece of a larger pipeline. We might need to send data to Spark to be pre-processed and then load that data into distributed TensorFlow for model training. And the resulting model might itself be used to serve customer requests. Without a standard system for managing the data exchanged between these distinct sub applications, the simplest solution ends up being to just copy the data. Now, in fact, this exact scenario has been studied extensively, both in research and in industry. And we've also heard from Ant Financial about a similar problem where incoming data has to be pre-processed to make decisions in real time, but it also needs to be batch processed for offline training. As application use cases continue to evolve, we believe that these scenarios will become more and more common. So how can we better support these use cases? We have two goals. The first is to allow data intensive applications to still use RPC directly to enable interoperability. The second is to factor out automatic memory management into this common system. And that way we can reduce the duplicated work and burden on developers. Our proposed solution has three parts. First is to extend RPC with distributed memory or a shared address space. But one caveat with this solution is that it seems to directly contradict one of the key properties of RPC, no shared state. So to address this, the second part of the solution is to make all values immutable. That way we can actually keep the original semantics of RPC, but now implemented with distributed memory. And finally, we extend RPC with first class references which means that the references are a part of the system's API. We'll see next what this means for the application. So first let's compare a hypothetical architecture. The first difference is that the RPC scheduler is now responsible for memory management. The data is stored in a distributed object store managed by the system with a local cache at each executor. When a client wants to send data to a server, it can pass the data through the distributed object store using a first class reference. In this way, we can reduce data movement, similar to raw references, but we also get automatic memory management. And finally, we get interoperability because we're still implementing an RPC-like interface. So let's take a closer look at first-class references. The API is actually very similar to pass-by-value RPC. A client can call a remote function f, but it can also pass an argument by reference. The system is responsible for dereferencing the value on the executor, and that's important because it means that the system has visibility into the function's dependencies. All function invocations return a reference. The returned reference also acts as a future, meaning that it's a pointer to the eventual reply of the function. And that allows the client to make other RPC invocations in parallel. Now let's compare first class references to raw references which combine an RPC system with a key value store. We'll look at how the system handles four key memory management operations on behalf of the application. First, there's allocation. In both cases, the level of application burden is minimal because the application doesn't need to say where to put a value. Reclamation is more challenging. With raw references, it requires determining whether a key is still in scope at the application, and that's equivalent to trying to find a raw pointer in a traditional program. With first class references, the system can implement garbage collection because all reference creation and destruction operations are captured in the system API. For data movement, the gap is in terms of optimality. With raw references, a key value store can reduce data movement, but it's hard to optimize that completely since the load balancer has no visibility into what keys the application will request. But with first class references, the scheduler knows exactly which objects a request needs, and that allows it to implement optimizations like data locality. Finally, when there's memory pressure, the goal is to ensure liveness and performance. With raw references, fetching too many values at the same time can lead to expensive measures from the OS, such as the um killer. But with first class references, the scheduler again has visibility into each request dependencies. And so, for example, the system could apply admission control to limit memory usage. So there are two ways that first class references enable automatic memory management. First, the system is aware of all reference creation and destruction operations, which is important for correctness. And second, the system has visibility into each RPC's dependencies, allowing it to better handle data movement and memory pressure. 
We think that pass by reference RPC could be the future for building data intensive frameworks and applications. But of course, there's still a lot of questions around system design, application support, and many others. You can check out our paper for some of our thoughts on these problems and to see how pass by reference RPC is already being used today. Thanks, and we're really excited to hear your thoughts and feedback.